Hello everybody, and welcome to the free game of the month, episode February 2024. And today, we'll be looking at a game called The Monster Inside, and as it says it's an audio-visual novella. I believe it, uh, I think it is only on Steam, I could be wrong about that though. But this is where I'm playing it, but completely free. And, uh, yeah, one thing I do want to say before we get started is I will be playing through this entire game minus the final chapter. So, if you wish to know the ending of the story, then go play it for yourself. I'll leave that a little mystery for you. It feels very in line with the game. Also, one other thing I wish to mention is that uh, it has Steam achievements, and for 14 minutes, you can easily get all of them. So if you're looking to do easy games to get Steam achievements or 100% complete, can't really go wrong with this. Free in like 14 minutes, so let us dive in. My head pounded, ears still ringing slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I've had in years left me feeling like I've been punched in the jaw. But just like any other day, I dragged myself to the office. There was another notice on the door from Mayor Venetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much and were trying to drown me in paperwork. It was a slow month, weeks since I've had any real case to work on, so I passed the time pacing the office, smoking and staring at the mirror in the corner, safely covered with an old bedsheet. I don't dare look at my own reflection, I'm too afraid of what I might see, afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quiet, I nearly choked on my cigarette. Mister, please, you gotta help me, mister. Calm down now, sit and talk slow. Okay, thanks, it's just, no one will listen to me. Just tell me your tale. I'm listening. She eyed me with just a dash of suspicion as I tossed back a handful of pills and chased them with a swig of whiskey. I could tell. This might take a while. Her name was Lily. She told me she was his mistress. A man all over the newspapers. The infamous banker, Mr. Reginald Farnsworth. Mr. Farnsworth was a drunk, fl uh, philandering beep, <laughs> but this girl gen seemed genuinely concerned that he had recently gone missing. Less concerning about the fact that Mr. Farnsworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. You don't understand. He just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife, but he couldn't have killed her. Everyone thinks it was him, and no one believes me. He's got to be in trouble. I ain't saying I believe you. What makes you think he's in danger? Well, mister, uh, um... Jack. You can just call me Jack. Jack. Whoever did that to his wife must have been the one who took him. He wouldn't have never left without me. He promised me. I'm sure Mr. Farnsworth promised this poor girl a lot of things. Please, the cops don't listen, won't listen to me, and they want to br uh, bring him in on charges. You gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I doubt they're in too much of a hurry. Farnsworth had practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they haven't found much yet. If they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with pitchforks is more dangerous than one man with money.
You've got my curiosity. We might not like what I find. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Jack. Thank you, but please, be careful. I don't think this was just any murderer or kidnapper. I think it... Uh, I, I think it was a... A beast. Beast. The word struck me funny. Like when you jar your elbow on a hard corner. Not a word many use these days. Except in hushed whispers and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough, all right. They just got better at hiding, controlling their unseemly urges. But I haven't seen any monsters in nearly 15 years, back when I was still a cop myself. I can help you. We'll get to the bottom of it. Don't you worry now. You seem like the kind of man who's good at solving mysteries. Sure. Can't you see how busy I am with cases? Played a little too harshly. Sarcasm wasn't my strong suit. I reassured her some more and sent her on her way. I didn't want to scare her, but I warned her before she left to keep her doors locked and call me if she saw anything suspicious. I didn't know if she was in any danger herself, but better safe than sorry. That night, I made my way down to Central Park. It was a long shot, but maybe there was something there the cops had missed. The scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago, but I've got a knack for finding the things others overlook. Knack. More of a symptom of a condition. Other, less useful symptoms I keep in check. For the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. It was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scent of less was less of a thing, more of an emotion. Seduction. Strangely familiar smell. I expe expected the smell of trepidation, or maybe even outright fear. But Miss Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to a crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind, it was time to get down to business. Muddy footprints everywhere. Difficult to pick out anything from the prints the cops left behind in their haste. But cops don't wear $2,000 pairs of Carquinos. It looked like Mr. Farnsworth was there that night and walked away on his own two feet. A burn mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and felt a, sh a chill down my spine. It wasn't just any burn mark, it's the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops could have picked up on it. Will they have been alright? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. After looking around for a while longer, I realized the park had given up all it was hiding from me. So I trudged back to my apartment, and my head hit my pillow like it owed me money. The next morning, I was reeling from another bout of ghoulish nightmares. I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside my office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned for her to step inside, seemingly afraid of what I might say. She finally worked up the courage to ask. So, what did you find? Not sure about beasts, but I've found something unnatural as that blood. Unnatural? How do you mean? Spells mark. Rarely seen these days, but unmistakable. What does that mean? What about Reggie? 
Do you know where he might be? There were signs he was at the scene and slipped away. My tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed a bottle from my desk drawer. The dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you, you don't know where he went? Do you know? Do you think the news this morning is related? Uh, what, what news is that? Haven't you heard? Nope. Rough night followed by a rough morning. They found the police chief, chief's wife dead down by the docks. They say it happened last night. Let me guess. Chief Amato is missing too? My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions, but it faded quickly. Amato was a beep cop and a beep chief. He was half the reason I left the force, but now his wife was dead and more questions than I did the day before. Gears on my head started to spin, which wasn't helped by the splitting pain at my temple. I told Lily I needed time to work and she'd left slightly dejected, wanting more answers than I could provide. That night, after the cops had cleared out of the docks, I could slip down and see what I could uncover concerning Miss Amato's ultimate, ultimately demise, untimely demise, sorry. <laughs> the cold air smelled strongly of salt and oil, and... Could it be? It's smell again, like someone had bottled pure arousal and used it as perfume. It hit me like a long forgotten memory. The sensational, uh, sen sensual, excuse me, <laughs> fumes soon gave way to a rush of adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and it scared me more than not knowing. I looked down, my hands shaking, the nightmares, the headaches. No. I was better now. Reformed. I had to focus. No jumping to conclusions. Follow the evidence. Red Phoenix cigarettes. Some beep brand. I smoke every day. Everyone's got their vices. There. Just there. The smallest piece of purple fabric. Torn and caught in the splinters of a board. The police report didn't say anything about Miss Amato's wearing purple. Miss Amato wearing purple. It was certainly of equality that you wouldn't expect down here. You don't see many high society types around flaunting royal purple threads. I pulled out my own pack of reds and lit up. I could already feel another headache coming on, but looking out over the waves seemed to help me forget. The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling to the top of my brain. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently I spent the night in my easy chair, the cold from the docks lingering on my clothes. It was still dark out. No, I, I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had it really slipped through the entire day? A newspaper was sitting under the door. As I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over, a wave of nausea hitting me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and gained, regained my composure. Before I could even pick up the paper, I could already read the headline. Breaking. Mayor missing. Wife found dead. Two cases is a coincidence. Three is a pattern. Cops could come asking questions soon. They knew I had a history of antagonizing all the victims. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days' worth of inhibitor pills. I couldn't take any chances. I had to investigate the scene to be sure. I threw on my jacket and went to the door. Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Jack, wh where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I'm sorry, Lily, but I don't have time to talk. I have to go. D okay, but, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay.
But it would be a lie. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartments where Mayor Venetti and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. They hadn't even bothered to submit the trash into evidence. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? It seemed untouched. No one wants to do the dirty work. But I know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know what to look for. Lightweight bags usually mean someone was dumping documents. If you're lucky, they didn't bother to shred them. Jackpot. Shell companies, shady stock trades, bribes. I knew Mayor Vanity was crooked, but this was unbelievable. And there was more. Letters between Mayor Vanetti and Chief Amato talking about me. How they were trying to get me shut down. They didn't like me snooping around crime scenes all the time. Well, they weren't here to stop me snooping around this one. Vanity's car. If he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in this car? Didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him. The stakes were too high. My bet was edging towards the unthinkable. As I searched around for anything that might assuage, assuage, I cannot pronounce that word apparently. <laughs> my fears. I caught the scent again. It overwhelmed my other senses while indulating with indulating pleasure. It was intoxicating. A weapon used on the weak-willed. A weapon I knew all too well. It had been many years since I had used it. Was there another like me? Was I being framed? It wasn't possible. What was it? I was taking my inhibitors. I, I, I was reformed. The nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapses. I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out of the alley when something shiny caught my eye. A watch. Not just any watch, though. My watch. How long had my wrist been bare? Truly, I just dropped it when I first came down the alley. I, I, I checked the time just before I left the office. Had, hadn't I? Or that, had I used the wall clock? I, I couldn't be sure. I, I couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. So that is where we shall stop things for the Monster Inside, because the next chapter is the final chapter. And again, if you wish to know how it ends, you should go take a look for yourself. But anyways, I hope you hope you enjoyed that little reading of the monster inside, or at least most of it. Yes. Monster Inside, free little game that you can pick up on Steam. I might be available on other like Edge or something. I don't know. But it is on Steam for sure. They can pick up entirely for free in a very easy way to get some achievements or perfect a game or whatever you wish if you're into that sort of thing. Anyways, a little bit of noir mystery for the month of February. Yeah, hope you enjoyed and I shall see you in the next month. Bye-bye. Take care.